I'm Ellis Martin, and this is Money Talk Radio. Join me now for a conversation with Chris Showalter, the CEO of LifeZone Metals, trading on the New York Stock Exchange as LZM. LifeZone, the supply chain solution for clean metals. LifeZone Metals is a modern metals company with the aim of creating value across the battery metal supply chain of extraction, processing, and recycling. Using its HydroMet technology, the company's products will responsibly and cost-effectively provide supply chain solutions to the global battery metals market. LifeZone's Kabanga Nickel project in Tanzania is believed to be one of the world's largest and highest grade undeveloped nickel sulfide deposits. By pairing with their HydroMet technology, they are working to unlock a new source of LME grade nickel, copper, and cobalt for the global battery metals markets and empower Tanzania to achieve full in-country value creation and become the next premier source of class one nickel. A definitive feasibility study for the project is due for completion by Q3 2024. Through LifeZone's US-based platinum, palladium, and Rhodium Recycling Joint Venture, the company is working to demonstrate that their HydroMet technology can process and recover platinum group metals from responsibly sourced spent automotive catalytic converters in a cleaner and more efficient way than conventional smelting and refining methods. Chris, welcome to the program. It's great to have you on the air with us today. Great. Thanks, Ellis. Really excited to be here. So thank you for taking the time. Tell us about the Kabanga Nickel Project in Northwest Tanzania and your mine-to-metal mining operation that you've got planned. Clean and green nickel in Tanzania. I didn't know. Yeah, we're trailblazing a bit. Yeah, no, thanks. I think for for Life's Own Metals, so the way we are constructed, we're a combination of really two core priority projects right now. One is the Kabanga Nickel Project, and we bring a unique angle where we are hydrometallurgical experts at our core, and I think that's really the founding expertise in the company. And what we do is we've been applying hydrometallurgical to projects, and, and Kabanga being our flagship project. Kabanga, this is one of the highest grade nickel sulfide projects globally, and so we were able to acquire the project off Barrick and Glencore in 2020. And then what we've done is really look at applying our hydromet flow sheet and engineering work to the Kabanga project, which is really, it's turned the whole entire concept upside down for Kabanga. I mean, previously, this was something where a a heavy bulk concentrate was going to be shipped out of Western Tanzania. Tanzania didn't have all the installed infrastructure. This was going back five plus years, actually almost 10 years. Now they do have installed infrastructure. They've got a brand new hydroelectric dam we'll be able to tap into from day one for installed grid power. They have a standard gauge rail going across the country and by doing local processing in country we really remove some of those major logistical costs and hurdles. So yeah, so a completely new design for the Kabanga project. And we've been fortunate enough to lure in BHP as well as a partner there where they've recently invested $100 million into the project with us. Well, that's certainly fascinating. Your recovery percentage at about 87.2% for nickel and about 85% for copper, which is really good. Yeah, the, the Kabanga deposit, It's this is, we're really lucky. This is, it's a very easily floatable material. There's not any of those deleterious nasties that you would get. And hydromet's a lot more forgiving. For instance, the, the MGO content in the ore body were able to process, whereas the previous owners who were, were intending to put this through a smelter did not incorporate the MGO as part of their plans. So we can capture a lot more tonnage because hydromet's able to process that specific chemistry. So we will be getting to final refined metal in Tanzania. We'll be getting to final nickel cathode, copper cathode, and cobalt rounds. And we'll be getting those final refined products to 999 LME grade metals. So yeah, really a full mine to final refined vertically integrated project in Tanzania. So it's very economic. You can ship it to Europe. You can ship it to all over the world because of the capital cost is really quite reduced compared to other projects. Yeah, by not shipping a heavy bulk concentrate, we, we save quite substantially on logistics and transport. And that also comes with a lower CO2 footprint because you're not incurring all those emissions as you ship something around the world. And I think we will have a very competitive process to place those metals. I think because of the very low CO2 component of our product, this is really something that the automobile manufacturers, there's a big conundrum as you're probably keenly aware in the nickel space, where you have some of the dirtiest metals coming out of Indonesia. And that's a huge problem for the auto manufacturers. And so what we're doing with Kabanga, we're providing this unique opportunity for the next big source of nickel and cobalt, non-Indonesian, non-Russian, proudly mined to final refined product in Tanzania. So it's a great story coming out of East Africa for Tanzania to really participate in the battery revolution and for us to provide those clean metals. I mean, just as an example, the range of CO2 per ton of nickel in Indonesia somewhere, it ranges from 40 all the way up to close to 80 and higher. 
tons of CO2 per ton of nickel. And we're forecasting right now that we'll be in the range of two to four. So for auto manufacturers that are going to be subject to policy constraints, restrictions on CO2 emissions, we're the sweet stuff that they're really going to want because they've been stuck with dirty Indonesian nickel. So that's where Kabanga and this project is very uniquely positioned. And that was one of the big allures for BHP. To come back into Africa was the exemplary nature of a project like Kabanga. Are those end users going to be able to wean themselves off of Indonesia, China, Russia, other dirty nickel? suppliers? It's a really good question. I think it's something we wish we had 10 more Kabangas and we could solve the problem. I think we'll be one solution that will be highly sought after. I think Indonesia is just so well positioned. They're going to be very tough to compete with. I think you're seeing a lot of difficulty in the Western Australia market. You're seeing the Australian mines close. They are really at the top end of the cost curve and that's where you're seeing a lot of challenges. I think because we're so low on the cost curve, we're going to be in that lower quadrant. So we're going to be very well insulated from nickel prices, but then also the apply from Indonesia. But I think to, to answer your question directly, I, I, I don't think you can replace Indonesian supply. I think that's just naturally going to go into the market continually. It's going to mostly feed smelters in China, but I think you're going to continue to see a bifurcation of new nickel projects that can differentiate themselves, but that's going to be few and far between. So there's no avoiding the supply coming out of Indonesia. And I think a lot of companies have just had to close their eyes to say, okay, if we want nickel, we're just going to have to take this regardless of the environmental implications. The share price is doing very well. Potentially, there's a lot of room for upside, especially with the Kamanga project and the hydromet processing that you're using. But what would you account for that? Is it because the size of the project? You certainly picked the project yourself. If you were looking for something, you picked the right part of the world with all the great attributes. But this is a great company and not every nickel company is hit and miss. When you look at the our stock price, I think it reflects a few things. I think it reflects the timeline we're on. It reflects the kind of the countdown to the BHP FID. So when we complete the DFS for the mine, the refinery, we're on track to complete that by end of Q3 this year. And so that is the trigger for BHP to invest if they elect their option to go from 17% to 60%. So we've got a very defined pathway for additional investment from BHP. So I think the market can anticipate that event and that is a fixed value process or formula. So they have to invest that next tranche at 0.7 in AV. They invested around the 100 million or so they invested was around 0.2, uh, actually 0.1 and 0.2 NAV. So there's a, a pretty clear value pathway for investors. If we deliver as management, the DFS on time, BHP exercise their option, then there's a clear re-rate we assume coming in the stock price. So that's a major catalyst on the horizon. I think investors are in the stock for, and I think the other near term catalyst is going to be the offtake agreement. So we've announced to the market that we are in the final stages of negotiating an offtake agreement, and this is going to be a significant catalyst. We had indicated to the market that would be approximately middle of this year, and we're on track. So I think in the near term, we're going to be poised to announce that to the market. And I think that's a major catalyst. That's something that a lot of investors are anticipating. And I think we'll deliver the right pedigree of offtaker that the market will take very positively. So I think, yeah, I think our stock price, I think BHP comes in, there's a clear re-rating of the stock. And I think that's, we have a very identified viable pathway of catalysts that can deliver value to shareholders. And I think that's where our stock is supported. And I think the inherent value of a project like Kabanga being such high grade, being such a well-defined resource, there's inherent valuation support just based on the ore body itself. Will you remain a producer or are you potentially a, a takeout candidate? How does that factor into your calculus at all? I'm just asking. Yeah, and no, I think where we're right now with BHP, we've got an incredibly collaborative relationship with BHP. And I think what we decided early on was not to just say, okay, you can have 17% and we'll see you when the DFS is done and you can check it out from there. What we've done is invited BHP into a very participatory process with the DFS. They've seconded a number of people into our team. We work very closely. They have seconded in specialists on the compliance side, any specialists on the geotech side or tailings, any, anything we require, they plug people in right away. They're sitting side by side with us on the DFS with DRA Global. So it is an incredibly highly collaborative process. I think that's, that's something we decided because we want to make this as BHP investable as possible. So to have that FID or their option when the time comes as basically an, as investment ready for a BHP process, that's really what we've endeavored to do. So I think we're in a pathway for P to potentially be a 60% controlling shareholder and us being 40. And we're very happy with that design that we've agreed previously. Any surprises potentially coming up in the future? Are you working on anything else outside of Tanzania? Yeah, yeah. So we have the core flagship project is obviously the Kabanga Nickel project. But the way I like to 
I guess, explain to investors, we, we have two big endorsements in the market. We have the partnership with BHP on Cabanga, but then we've partnered with Glencore on the recycling side in North America. And this is for auto catalytic converters. And this is, so we've got two of the major mining companies partnered with us. And this is the partnership model we pursued where we can apply our hydrometallurgical expertise in partnership with some of the big majors. And I think this pathway for us credentializing our technology with two majors is probably the, you know, the most profound demonstration of where we are as a company in a very positive track. Glencore, they have made a very big commitment to recycling. This is the patented PGM hydromet expertise we have taking from the mines that we've worked on in South Africa and applying that to the recycling market in the US. And it's a really nice pivot for us to be able to take the hard work we've done and then do it in a more lean, smaller plant, potentially more scalable. And Glencore is a partner. They provide us balance sheet support. They provide market expertise. We provide the technical low sheet engineering design. And the thing with autocatalytic converters, right now these get dumped into existing mining operations and smelters and furnaces. So if you're going to recycle, you really want to do it in a way that's going to be clean and green and sustainable. Right now, the recycling industry, if you're just putting it back into dirty furnaces, you're just compounding the overall impact of that metal over time. So we think we have a solution for the U.S. autocat recycling market to really get this right in terms of kind of that thinking of a circular economy. And what I like about the market as well is you have companies out there willing to pay a premium for this type of recycled material. So Tiffany's, Pandora, they publicly are out there saying they will only buy clean recycled platinum. And I think we're going to be able to produce one of the best products for companies like that. So yeah, that's a really exciting opportunity for us. And with Glencore as a partner, you know, we're not in this long term with them for one plant. We're in this for 10 to 20 and to really grow and scale this strategy regionally and geographically across North America and then internationally. And when you look at all the overall energy transition, the amount of combustible engines that are going to be coming online, that's a major theme. And so there's going to be a lot to recycle over the near term. Coming online and coming offline, I imagine there's a lot of feedstock for recyclable PGMs. Yeah, there is. And I think it's it's a market we really like. You can imagine if one of these plants for us is going to be in the range of, say, 18 to 22 million, you will get about the same platinum, palladium, rhodium ounces out of this plant as you would a medium-sized platinum in South Africa. So for us, this is a great application of our expertise to clean up the recycling arena. And this, these are three critical metals in North America. So we qualify potentially for various fiscal incentives within the IRA and other government entities because we'll be providing clean critical metals refined domestically in the U.S. So that's a really cool angle for us. I imagine that gives you friends across the political spectrum from all sides then. Yeah, it does. And I think not only this recycling project in North America, but the importance of the Cabang and Nickel project and the support we're we're getting from the U.S. government specifically in the within the context of the Mineral Security Partnership. Kabanga is really an important one because what we're doing in Tanzania is we're really empowering Tanzania to become this new kind of East African hub for the battery supply chain. And when you set up one processing hub in a location like central Tanzania, there's a lot of scattered, just orphaned assets or bodies in Tanzania that now will be economically viable having a centralized processing solution in countries. So we unlock a lot of other economically non-viable projects and then with all the installed infrastructure Tanzania has put the hard time and investment into and the power, the hydroelectric power, and then the rail, we're able to overlay on top of that and unlock what should be a regional battery metals hub. And I think Kabang is step number one, but we envision long-term that we could be processing a number of different metals within this, what we call multi-metals processing facility. And that's very exciting because you know, the U.S. government then, that's where they can, with Vice President Harris having visited last year and really seeing Tanzania as a strategic partner within this mineral security partnership umbrella, Kabang plays a very important part of that story. So, yeah, we get a lot of support from the U.S. government and the mineral security team. Thank you for making me aware of that. I didn't know, and now our audience knows. There's so much information out there, and if we don't communicate like we're doing now, really, folks aren't going to know. And I have a new knowledge about nickel mining, production, recycling that I didn't have, and you are doing it all. Chris Showalter, it's a real pleasure to speak with you. I look forward to our next chat. Thank you so much for joining me today in the program. Oh, it's a real pleasure, and I, I definitely look forward to our next discussion. Thank you so much. I've been speaking with Chris Showalter, the CEO of Life Zone Metals, trading on the New York Stock Exchange as LZM. Learn more about the company by visiting their website, lifezonemetals.com. For Money Talk Radio, I'm Ellis Martin.